right, we're out here near the shop today, uh, getting ready to start working on this boat to get it ready for next weekend, which is Memorial Day. So what I'm gonna do is I got my impact here. I'm gonna take the seats off of the wood. I'm gonna get more rivets. I'm gonna re-rivet the piano hinge that broke off. And I'm just gonna do away with these seats. And I'm gonna have some sort of backrest to put in, kind of like the other boat is, where we'll just have a bottom and a back. So then we'll have, we won't be putting all of our force into the front of this flimsy aluminum, which got bent pretty good whenever the seat came off. I'm going to come back out with a hammer and a punch. I'm going to knock all these old rivets out that just sheared the tops off. Um, maybe tap this down, push that, because that's kind of bent back right now. As you can see, it's got a bend in it. Try to straighten that back out. And maybe we'll upsize the holes and go with the 3 16 rivet, but we shouldn't have any force put on that now once we put a backrest on the back of the seat. Got the boat back in the shop today. Gonna start working on the backrest for the seat because I finally made it into town and I uh, got some aluminum. We got some angle here, inch and a half by eight inch. Probably overkill, but that's okay. And I've got some more one inch square tube like I've been using on the rest of it. So should have plenty of that. I got 60 foot of square tube. And I got 20 or 16 foot of an angle. So we'll get started by figuring out where we want our backrest uh, to sit. You know, get our lean angle back so it's comfortable. And then we'll get some pieces cut out and start attaching them. Okay, so this is the idea on how we're going to mount this. Because if this boat works out well, we'll end up doing away with this seat and covering the motor. Kind of like we did the other one, just in a different way. So I don't want to have a bunch of stuff uh, welded all over the place that I'm going to have to work on. So I've got some angle here that I'm going to rivet through the gunnel and then I'm going to cut some square tube that's going to go up against this um, and then it'll be riveted to this and I might weld to this also but just so that this bar is removable um, and then I got one on that side and once that's in um, I'll have another piece. Uh, sandwiching the bar kind of like that so it should be pretty stout so this bar will go coming kind of somewhat like this I'm gonna get in there and sit down and see how I feel about the angle if it's lean back far enough if not I'll just slide it back another inch until I like where it's at uh, then we'll come through and I'll rivet this piece of angle to the gunnel once it's solid then I'll drill and I'll rivet this piece in here and then once everything's held up I'll get another piece on the front to really sandwich it in there 
um, and then I might I'll come in here on top and I'll clean all these edges off so it's nice and smooth and it should be stronger than my welds are currently because I haven't uh, haven't quite got that mastered yet all right so I know I'm not great at explaining things so I'll just show you what I did I've got four rivets two into the square tube two into the gunnel um, to hold this piece here super solid of course i do have a ratchet strap here holding the boat i pulled it together just so this would stay real tight when i riveted it uh, so now i'm going to go and i'm going to do that side and then we'll see how it feels Okay, got this side riveted on. Uh, some of these rivets are breaking off kind of far out, so I'll come back and cut those off so they're not sharp. Got one sticking way out down there, but it seems to be attached. So now I'm gonna go let this ratchet strap off. And if everything holds, uh, the boat shouldn't spread out any. That's my seat mount, and of course I still have more angle uh, to go here to help with the flex, which I think once there's a piece of wood across there uh, that you're leaning on, it shouldn't be too bad. It'll, but we'll go ahead and add the other pieces just in case, and then whenever we're done, I'll come back and clean those edges off so they're nice and flat. Okay, I went ahead and put these seats back on. I was going to try to do something a little different, but for the time being, this will work. So when you lean back, you hit this bar here, and that should spread the load out and keep it from tearing the seat off. Uh, I went ahead and mounted the fire extinguisher to the back of this, just so it's mounted and easy to get to. Also went ahead and replaced the fitting that was in there that got broke. So the engine's good to go. Now I'm going to start working on uh, bilge pumps and drain plugs so that the glue will have time to dry before we go to the water. Um, I've got a bilge pump to go on either side of the jet ski hull and a drain plug to go on either side also because water won't drain from just one side because it won't uh, go across the hull. Got the bilge pump sitting kind of where it's going to go. Um, I don't have any hose for it yet, but I do have this, I had that fitting for it. Uh, it's just a 90 degree fitting. I'm gonna tuck it right up in there like that. So then I can have a piece of hose tucked right up against the side of the boat. Should look pretty nice. So now I just gotta drill a one inch hole right in there somewhere. Okay, I got one of the bilge pumps uh, routed on here. I didn't pay attention when I ordered these. These have a one inch outlet, so I had to stretch the hose out for my three quarter inch uh, through hole fitting. I've got the bottom of it sitting down here. I'm just gonna glue that to the floor of the boat because I'm not gonna, I don't wanna put screws through the boat to hold that in. Uh, it worked on the other boat, so it should work on this one. The drain plugs have been lost. Not sure where they went, but uh, they're not going in because they don't have them. So I'm gonna just get these put in, get the vacuum bilge pumps put in, which I bought. I don't know if I showed them. That's these ones right here. These came out of an older jet ski. I'm just gonna put these uh, ends on the end of my hoses and I'm gonna tuck them away down here in these bottom corners, kind of where that, kind of where this hose is at. So that anytime the engine is running, it'll be sucking any water that's back there out of the back of the boat. Those work decent how they were, but uh, this one will probably work better. This is what I also have in the other boat. Um, so we'll get those mounted. Um, and then get the other side bilge pump put in in the same spot as that one. So it'll sit about there. Run our hose up to the fitting. Um, and then when we're gluing the bottoms in, I'll also put a little bit of 3M on the back side of this fitting just so that it doesn't leak any not that it should matter being that high up on the back of the boat okay uh, got all this stuff setting up got my glue on there those are glued down waiting on those to set up before i mount the bilge pumps to them uh, while that's waiting i'm doing the wiring up here i went ahead and 
I got the kill switch mounted so the lanyard can go on there. That way if I fall off again, uh, maybe if I'm wearing the lanyard, it will at least uh, shut the boat off. Um, and then inside the seat, I'm still working on the rest of it. The trim, which is these two buttons here, uh, it's not working currently, so I'm not sure why. It doesn't show up on my gauge. But uh, this is the start button, and there's not really a good way to mount it. So I went to the store, and I bought this uh, push button, start button. I know it's not a waterproof switch, but it's only temporary, just so I can have all the buttons where I can get to them. And I also bought another switch, just a regular on-off switch, and that is going to be running the uh, bilge pumps in the back of the boat. And then some spade connectors and some wire loom. Try to keep it looking halfway decent. Uh, so yeah, we're going to get started. I'm going to cut the end off of this one, which is the start-stop button. Put the momentary switch on there. And then we'll have a start button that I can drill a hole here, and I can just reach down and start or shut off the boat. Okay, the glue is set up on the bilge pump, so I got those uh, sitting in there. They're pretty solid. I went ahead and wired the bilge pumps together, so I've just spliced into the wires for this bilge pump, and they're going to run to the front. Um, I've got this wire, which will run the float switches, because these are automatic. Um, and then this other brown wire here with the white stripe it will go to a switch so I can turn them on manually if I need to, but uh, I know in the other boat I hardly ever turned them on. I just let the float switches do their thing, and uh, yeah, so we'll get this uh, wire that's running across the back. I'll put that in a loom, and then I'll lengthen these wires, run it up under the seat, and I've got another switch that I'll mount right next to this one uh, that'll just be a, a switch to turn the bilge pumps on manually. Got my switch mounted for my bilge pumps, so that turns the bilge pumps on. Uh, wiring's all tucked in a loom, goes under the seat, and then of course these are automatic, so if the water rises, they come on on their own. So got that done. Now I'm going to start working on this front part, I'm getting some aluminum cut. I'm going to run. Uh, a brace across here and then two one on either side of the filler neck so I can cut the filler neck down And then when I cover this there will be a little door to put gas in it. So that's just not sticking up um, So we'll get those braces put in probably put one in here also to brace this up and Then we're gonna run two uprights one on uh, either side of the gas tank to solid that bar up a little bit Got my first uh, brace put in, got my angle riveted into the corners. Um, I got enough to do the inside corners. I'm not sure if it's going to be necessary because it feels real stout. Uh, I'll go ahead and get the other one in with at least two and see how it feels. And then we'll go ahead and do the uprights in here. And hopefully then this back bar here will be solid enough that when we, if we cover this, you could sit on it or walk on it without uh, collapsing. All right, still working on the framing up here in the front. Uh, I've got the bottom of this one riveted in. I'm getting ready to do the top up here. Got the gas tank pushed out of the way so the drill will fit. Uh, I went ahead and got the top pretty much done. I think I'm going to run one more support here uh, around. It'll be around that uh, gas filler that'll get cut off. So yeah, we'll get uh, this piece of angle clamped in here drill some holes in it and put the rivets on okay I got all the bracing done on the boat I have these little dummy pieces here so that the wood can come out far enough to uh, cover the gas tank when we do our upright piece here got the plywood on the back of the truck so tried to mark it as best we could tried to mark it as best we could uh, you can't really see it but I'm gonna cut this off with the sawzall and then we will uh, then we will trim it as needed got this piece cut out uh, it's not screwed down right now I'm getting ready to take it off so I can try to mark out where the uh, gas filler is gonna go and if I can get the hose short enough I'm gonna leave it beneath this 
and there will be a little uh, little door that flips up here. Keep this nice and flat in case you're walking on it. You don't trip on the gas cap. But now we're going to pull this off and uh, look at the gas cap. got the top of the deck screwed down I went ahead and cut out this square piece in the middle um, because I wanted to do this in three parts so that I got these two on the sides uh, they're gonna go like that and then there's gonna be a hinge so they'll open that way I can put my life jackets and stuff in there I've got some little cabinet latches that I'm gonna try to screw in down here to hold the door shut and then I'll just do what I did on the gas door which is drill a hole big enough to get my finger in so I can open and close it. This one doesn't have a latch on it because with it hinged that way, it should never uh, fly open. So I'm going to try to get these hinges screwed onto these and then uh, figure out how the latches are going to go in. All right, I got these uh, done. I didn't record it because I was kind of like just laying in the floor here and I didn't have a lot of room. Uh, so I got my little cabinet latches. I went in and put my life jackets in there. This side here is empty. So that's the front deck finished for now. I might end up putting another uh, uh, hatch up in the front where I can put like an anchor or something. But for now, this is gonna do it. Um, only thing left before we go back to the water is to remount the gauges, which I can't put them over here now because this opens. So they're gonna have to be put in the middle, which means I'm gonna have to do what I didn't wanna do and cut all these wires there's uh, only four of them but I'm gonna have to cut those lengthen them I'll run them up behind uh, this piece here and then probably for now I'll just screw this bracket that I already have I'll just screw it on just like that so I can see my gauges eventually I'll probably take the middle piece back out I'll cut a hole that the gauges will sit down in there flat and then uh, hold them in that way so they look a little cleaner. But for now, it'll work to just put them uh, just like that. Okay, got the front deck pretty much finished up for now. Eventually, I'll come back and paint this. Probably put a bead of caulking around the edge just to fill this gap in. Um, all the doors work. Got our gas door. Got my life jackets in this side. I don't have anything in that side. I might put my little tackle box or something in there. But that's going to do it for this video. In the next video, we'll probably have this thing out on the water again, trying it out. Uh, seeing if our seat brace is enough to keep us in the upright position. But uh, make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.